Good luck. All right. Ooh. We have an offer uh, for bishop exchange right on the first move of the game. Uh, the okay. I am startled. Um, interesting. I think this is playable. I hope this is playable, because I played it. So the idea is I'm going to bring my king over to defend on the right side of the board, because I always play ranging rook openings. Um, I just find it's easier to um, have some flexibility in my move ordering as well as some flexibility in what objectives I choose to pursue from the outset. Um, even though it causes me a great deal of confusion, um, this flexibility is pretty great. All right. What do I make of this? I guess we just continue putting the king toward the corner. Um, if I've lifted the silver, then there's this hole, so... That's not permissible. And on this pawn advance, I think the correct answer is for me to use my gold. Um, I think this is playable. It's a bit awkward because... Um, FYI, Shogi Explained will be playing a simul about an hour from now. Feel free to check that out. Um, he's going to be doing some puzzles right now, too. So I got a little noti notification in uh, chatty here. Um, I'm struggling over some of my words because notification, chatty, and Shogi all have similar... Um, stress on um, first and second syllables, so I'm confusing one word with another. But yeah, check that out. That'll be a simul. I'll be missing it, probably. Um, Alright, what the hell do I do here? So if I move the king over again, I think all the crazy pawn drops are dealt with. Yes, I think I can still do this. As long as I don't move my gold in the center, I think it's this is all playable. Um, it's only when I move the center gold that things get kind of dubious. Alright, so... I see we've both been avoiding this obvious tempo loss bishop exchange idea. I'm slowly running out of things to do other than block the diagonal. Um, I'm not really looking forward to doing that, but I don't have other ideas right now. Other ideas get me in a lot of trouble in a tremendous hurry. Um, I could move the bishop up one, and we could transpose into just normal bishop exchange territory. Um, 
That might not be bad. Um, could push my fourth file pawn. Not sure what that does, but I'm observing that I could do it. He's going to advance a silver, and then I need another move. Um, yeah, blocking the diagonal is not terrible, honestly. Um... So if I push, they push, I take, Rook takes. If I push again, I haven't gotten anywhere. Alright, so what else can I consider? Um, if I advance my gold... I should... If I exchange bishops, silver takes, and then I drop on 5-5. Five five. They do something to defend this, and I don't have a next move. Um, so I've kind of trapped my silver back here. So I really don't want to trap my bishop and rook. Oh, well, yeah, okay. So I could push my fourth file pawn and stick the rook over behind it. And claim that I'm playing right hand fourth file rook, even though I don't know it. But also, if I do that, they just push this pawn and then their rook swings over and takes the other one. So, that's not great. Um, hmm. I could push my edge pawn. Gives my bishop another square to go to, and eventually my knight, but um, it doesn't really do much. What else could I try? I could stick my bishop in the center of the board and beg this pawn to attack it. Um, but that would be blocking my rooks. There's no reason for him to do something so reckless. Hi. Well, I think this is as good as I can find here. So yes, I've trapped my silver. This is not exactly what I wanted out of this opening. Um, but I don't really know what else I could have done. Also, I could push the pawn again, which half of me really wants to do. Just really push the envelope on this, but, um, is there anything else I could do with the tempo before I start going crazy? Because my rook doesn't actually do anything in the center of the board. It looks nice, but... Um, well, the rook's even worse where it is right now. <sighs> this is so confusing. All right, let's expose my rook. I really don't understand this position, but um, it doesn't look bad. And alternatives do look bad, so we're going to play the crazy looking move.
Like, I considered trying to burn a tempo some other way. Um, but I couldn't come up with anything constructive. Whereas this way, at least I know I'm activating my bishop. I know I'm trying to activate my rook. If the bishop or the rook start moving, then there's room for my gold and silver to start breathing again. Breathe with a TH. Um, yeah, I don't know. And if he ignores it, I just do pawn takes pawn, and I don't know. That might not even do anything. All right, but yeah, I fully expected this capture. So we have this recapture. And here I debated... Oh, well, for some reason I thought like my bishop would end up on a better diagonal if I played rook 5-5. Five five and exchange bishop for rook, and somehow my bishop would be attacking the square in front of their rook. That's not actually how any of this works. Um, so, what do we do? Um, we don't want this silver to be pursuing my rook. I could drop all the way back. Or it could go across the rank, and then down one, and then back onto the third file. Uh, if I go across, they push the pawn. Supposing I take rook takes, my rook goes back, they exchange rooks. They have a rook drop somewhere? I don't know. I think this is still, regardless of how this plays out, I need to try to activate the rook. Whereas just dropping straight back looks too, I don't know, like I'm giving up. So, um, yeah, we're going to fight this way. Big idea is to drop the rook down a rank. I was going to say row, and then I said rank, but not really. Drop the rook down a rank, and then bring it over to the third file again. And it's not going anywhere there, but still, um, it's strongly positioned on this third file. But also just on this fourth rank, it can deal with this pawn and negate my opponent's rook. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. Um, so, I think I need to capture this. What I'm not sure of is, do I need to capture the bishop first? Um, I don't think I need to capture the bishop at all, because he's not going to do bishop takes bishop. Um... Plus, there's no tactical advantage to me playing it, so this was my big plan. Let's stick to the plan, because I'm down five minutes. Alright, so he has threats, or a threat, against my bishop. Um, I could offer a rook exchange across the rank, and then he would do a rook drop. And I couldn't offer the exchange a second time. Could be interesting, though. If I have this target... Well, even their bishop could hit this target. Like, it's not worth making a target like that. Um, so this was my big plan. I don't really see what they're doing. And while that's terrifying, I can't just sit in fear forever. Um, so let's keep playing, see if we can find anything useful to do.
Okay, I was half expecting the rook to go over here to 6-6. Six, six. I'm not even sure if that would have been good, but that's kind of what I was expecting. Um, yeah, what do I do here? It's very difficult for me to find a constructive use of a tempo. I don't want to block my bishop. But I fall victim to so many tactics if I... Well, he's got a pawn in hand. He's going to have tactics regardless what happens here. Um... I need a plan. I don't have a plan. Hmm. I could drop it here. Pawn takes. I advance my knight to hit this. My knight doesn't really hit. Well, my knight's doomed the minute it starts moving. Um. I think the best I can do is continue trying to put my rook on a decent square. So my idea of what a decent square is now is the square in front of my pawn. But um, then he just blocks with his pawn. And my attack is very slow. So what do I do? I could have considered pushing my edge pawn. Uh, if pawn takes, lance takes, pawn drop by my lance's head, and stuff maybe gets complicated, but further gets complicated by just the knight hitting my rook. But maybe there was some breakthrough tactic magic there that somehow justified it all. Um, unlikely, but I should at least consider it. Um... So my king is on this very vulnerable diagonal. I don't want my rook right next to my king, especially while tactics might exist there. So I need to get my rook somewhere safe and or exchange rooks and then start dropping my rook on their side of the board and see if I can make something happen. Um... This open diagonal and perpetual threat of bishop takes bishop has both of us pretty concerned. But until my rook is like on the left side of the board, it would be a mistake for me to exchange bishops. Um, because this bishop is going to harass my rook and start harassing my king. Um or it's going to attack my rook and support whatever attacks come toward my king. So my rook has to be as safe as it can be before um, bishops do get exchanged. Or, alternatively, if bishops exchange, I need to get a tempo out of it somehow. So if there's a safe way for me to advance my silver up the board as a result of a bishop exchange, um, that would be useful and maybe compensate for my rook being in such peril here um, but yeah other than playing my rook to the eighth or second file depending on how you look at it um I'm not sure what else i can do like, if I start shuffling pieces around my king, it becomes weaker. If I start moving pieces on this left corner, um, bishop drops, and maybe even later a rook drop could become devastating. So, I'm not seeing what to do. And the rook exchange could be dangerous, too.
right. Um, so option A is move my rook and continue trying to offer a rook exchange like I've been desiring for quite a while now. Uh, so that's one option. Uh, another option is exchange the bishops on this square. And then, I don't know. I don't see any continuation. Now why did he do this, is my question. He must have confidence in his ability to attack, or at least parry my rook exchange offer. Um, another possibility is just attack the bishop directly. Like, move my rook over, hit the bishop, watch him exchange bishops, and then he'll probably drop the bishop on 5-5, five, five, and then offer a rook exchange. Doesn't seem to make much sense. So yeah, this bishop is kind of an easy target um, for my silver. Um, it might take a while, but... It is an obvious target, and I don't see, like, his attack hasn't yet moved fast enough on my king. I'm not super alarmed just yet. Maybe I should be. Oh, another option would have been to hit this pawn in front of the king. Um... Which might just suggest him to move it. Then I take the bishop, he takes my rook. I take the lance, he does something. That could have been interesting. That probably would have been worth exploring more than this is. Um, just because I like to get confusing positions. Ones where um, it's hard to say like that I objectively did something terrible. Um, actually, no. If I put my rook in front of this pawn, they could exchange bishops and things get complicated. And it looks like I'm losing material in every line there. So maybe that's not so good. Trying to win a pawn often leads to disaster when I do it, because um, my attacks uh, could be better thought out. So my concern is he exchanges rooks, then exchanges bishops, then does a rook drop on 4-9 or 6-9 back here. All right. He actually believes in my rook exchange idea. It's good to know one of us believes in it. Um, so... Now what? We've blocked his rook. Now my rook's actually quite nice on this rank. Um, hmm... Bishop takes, silver takes, uh, they do a drop here, forking my gold and rook. I can move the rook back over, protecting my gold. They could sack, but it's not enough to promote their rook. Um, oh, so if I bring my rook over, they push this. Bishop takes bishop, pawn takes rook, bishop takes lance. Silver moves. Uh, I'm one move too slow to untrap this, so I'd have to keep my horse trapped while they continue attacking. And I don't have a rook in that case. Um, I think this is still the right move. 
but not for the obvious reason. So once they push, then I move the rook away. And this advanced pawn has left a hole behind that's hard to cover. I think that's the meaning here. It's not about me trying to win a pawn. It's about me trying to expose a hole in their position. Now maybe they can make use of the hole somehow. Um, I haven't really accounted for everything here, but... Yeah, that's an idea. Hey, we might get him into Bioyomi this game, so... I guess mission accomplished. Even if we lose the game, uh, getting the opponent to spend their time means that we've played a reasonable game. Or we've played something so thoroughly unreasonable that it's confused them. Um, but I think it's the former. Oh my. I did not anticipate this. Um, that's dangerous. Well, uh, I mean, what can we say? What can we say? I think this is fine. <sighs> if there is some trick here, I'm not seeing it. So we've split our opponent's castle, um, but there's no way to exploit it right now. Still think this is the best square for my rook. Uh,
30秒。<laughs> This still looks reasonable to me. Fragile, yes, but、um, I mean, this point beggars can't be choosers, so.、Um, if I'm looking for a safe attacking option, it's too late for that. Don't know what to think about this. Like, this fourth file is. The easiest one for me to attack on, and if my rook is on this file, their silver cannot move.、Um, on the other hand, there's an obvious king bishop fork, or king rook fork, with this bishop on 5 5. So I need to proceed with extreme caution.、Um, then again, I want to drop a pawn right here, move my knight up, see if I can get something to happen.、Um, But also, dropping the rook all the way back to the first rank makes some sense too. But it would allow them to attack on the second file, so maybe that's not so bright. I'm just concerned about all the places a bishop drop could occur.、Um, This feels dumb. But my silver was not doing. Well, my silver was defending my gold over here. So it was actually doing something. But、um, it was also like if I brought it toward the center, it was going to step into my rook and trap it.、Um, so this looks like the safer option of two evils here.、Um, My gold is not defended anymore, but what can I do? I could drop back the silver if somehow they do a bishop drop to hit it. They don't? Alright.、Um, I don't understand this. This looks complicated. This looks very complicated. <sighs> What the heck? Let's have some fun. So, the reason I did the silver move was so that I could do these tactics without a bishop on 5 5, completely ending the game. Um. We are giving our opponent a pawn in hand again, which could be perilous.、Um, but I have some ideas. This is not all for naught.
right? That's possible. Um, so my thought here was that I was going to sack my knight and somehow break in. I think I'm still correct. So let's promote over here. You've given the opponent a knight. And then we hit the knight. And regardless of how our opponent answers, something has opened up here. So that was the idea. I don't like parting with material uh, being coming from the chess side of things and then learning shogi second. I sure love attaching myself to keeping all the pieces, but um, sometimes the position really demands that I have to sacrifice. Uh, so here's my sacrifice. Uh, and I think I immediately get it back, but maybe not. Maybe there's some trick here that I've completely missed that changes the nature of everything. I don't think so. I think it's as simple as silver takes. I take this pawn. And I'm attacking the silver and threatening to promote my rook. And I've been told that it's not worth sacrificing a piece just to promote my rook. But, like, when I don't have any other idea as to what to do in the position... Um, then we get sack happy and find a way in. So I think it's fine. Um, sure would have been nice to attack in the direction of the king, but I don't know how to do that. I missed they could drop a bishop right back here. But then they've committed their bishop, so... Who knows what's even worth it anymore. Okay, that's an aggressive move. That's... Have I missed something? Um... I mean, I'm just going to sit here for a minute, make it look like I'm thinking, and then I'm going to do the obvious capture. So, um, I mean, I'm trying to read out, like, the possibility of a mate on the edge file, but it's just way over my head. All right, we're taking. So people look at the game record afterward. Yes, I did spend forever thinking about this. Um, all right. So I've been given the general advice that it's usually safer to keep the king on the second rank than to bring it forward in this kind of situation. Um, I think that still holds true here. That bringing forward my king would just put it in further danger. So, let's do this. Okay. And now we enter the crux of my confusion, which is that I could just take this pawn. Hmm. Yeah, I have no idea what to do. At all. 
So, as far as I know, that's the most reasonable move in this position. So this defends against their knight and attempts to put some resistance on the edge. I don't know how successful this is. But by trying to give my king somewhere to run to, the hope is that I survive this. Um, what confuses me is all the manner of exchanges which are possible here. Um, But he doesn't have two generals, so we have reason to hold on and hope. It's awkward as heck. Oh, that's a good move. That is resourceful. All right. Um, oh, I'm sorry, that's resourceful. I don't know whether it's good or not, because this is actually a really complicated position. I think he should have just pushed on the edge. So this gives my king more space to run, but it actually opens up a diagonal straight toward my king, so maybe that's not so bright. I was so excited at the prospect of this bishop moving off this diagonal that I forgot there are other ways to attack my king. There's another diagonal. But I do have it guarded kind of well, I guess. We'll see how well it holds up. Okay. Um, I mean, I could take the bishop. It's his best defensive piece. Um, he's got a silver now. Am I checkmated because of that? Uh, time will tell. But yeah, this bishop is a monster. So, if I leave this on the board, I'm surely in trouble. Um, especially because he gets another gold. That could be terrible for me. I briefly considered Rook takes Knight, but yeah, then he takes my gold, and I'm almost certainly checkmated, so... Yeah, we're going to play this way. Um... Oh, 
How do I attack? It's often said in jest that, like, the best offense is a good defense. Um, our best defense is a strong offense, rather. Um, but it'd be nice to have an offense here, wouldn't it? I don't know if this really helps me or not. Like, yeah, I could attack toward the right side of this king, but that's not going to work either. Um, a bishop might at some point defend some critical square, so that's the idea. Also, this does plug the file against a rook that might want to enter. Um, so... There's no question that I'm a bit stressed about my opponent's attack, but um, either I survive it or I don't. So my thought here was I was going to look at knight takes, silver takes, and bishop takes. Well, knight takes, I think I'm dead. Like, they promote and then silver drop mate. Um, bishop takes, they do a knight fork, I cry, game ends. So there's really only one move here if I'm going to take this, and I think I am. Um... So, yeah, we take this way to limit the number of pieces our opponent can capture um, so they don't, like, take my silver and then take my gold. Their arranged pieces that they have remaining are lance, lance, and rook. So every attack um, that comes from here on out is going to be from them dropping pieces near my king. It's unlikely that they'll have a ranged piece. So I just need to worry about how drops can ruin or not ruin this. Um, so... Ah, so now things get complicated. Yeah, I considered taking the knight and then realized, wait, there's a mate there. So let's play a defensive move here instead. Was there a mate? Actually, no. If I took this knight, um, I don't see a mate anymore, but I was convinced that there was one. Um, hmm. Hmm, I'm not impressed with my silver drop. Just invites another knight. Can repeat this tactic all over again. Um, I 
I'm confused. Well, so if my king is ever going to run, this knight has to move. So unless silver takes silver somehow radically changes that, and it doesn't. Um, there's no... I can't see any disadvantage to knight takes. I mean, yeah, I don't want to give him a knight, but... Um, but in terms of what I can read out, it looks to me like knight takes is the only way that I might be able to survive this. Um, Well, I suffer heavy material loss a number of ways here if I mess up. Um, hmm. Yeah, I have no idea again. No idea. It's just too much for me to figure out. I considered a pawn drop on 1-3. Some other turn that might have been a good idea. It's too late now. So potentially I have a knight drop on 2-5, but only if I can get control of the 1-3 square. So pawn drop 1-4 is now my idea. Um, but then they just pawn drop on 1-2, and this blocks their lance, and I can take the token. But they're going to interrupt all of this by moving the token out of the way, or dropping a pawn here, or something like that. Um... And my king just needs to run like hell. And I think it can. I think he's a good runner. Um, Alright, pawn drop 1-4 enters my mind again. <sighs> Wait, they could take... Well, it doesn't matter if it's check or not. They can take that. That's fine. Whatever. Uh, yeah, now this has to be played. We have to get some kind of entry to our opponent's king. And a knight drop on 2-5 is not what we're looking for. So, yeah, maybe somehow I can force my way down the first file. If they give me time. So that's the question is, can we get the time to attack down the first file? Probably not, but let's keep an open mind about it.
All right, a threatened mate. Uh, my king can still run. Everything is fine. And so my big idea is then bishop four six and bishop drop on one three. Somehow I might have enough firepower to do something. Now to counter this they could exchange like here. Um, and I'm not sure. I didn't read this out. Um, but this greatly reduces the danger to my king in the very, very, very short term in exchange for giving my opponent a bishop. And so now I control the first file and all of their pieces check diagonally. So as long as I sidestep diagonal checks, it's a little tricky for them to continue attacking. So I've reclaimed the first file. Again, like, I don't have a serious checkmate threat at the moment, and I'm probably in danger, but I can breathe. That's an improvement, right? Hmm. I've been trying to read this. I've been spinning my wheels looking at this as much as I can, but it's just overwhelming. Um, but yeah, this is the move for me to try to read. I don't see a answer. I think I have to offer the lance. And now the bishop is sitting in the corner. Um, but it's scary. Of course, my viewers have uh, all spotted exactly what's going on here, but they have figured this game out. Uh, I just don't know. That's the problem. <laughs> um, but no, I thought this was okay. Maybe not. Maybe I needed to drop a pawn there instead. No, that doesn't make a difference. Um, so a lance, eh? What do you do with the lance?
30秒So I kind of want to just take the knight with my silver and recognize at the same time that that's probably the most dangerous thing I could play here. Um, alternatively, knight drop at 2-5 looks stronger and stronger move by move. Uh, although his king escapes, so, like, what's the point? But, um... Alright, now I finally put down my bishop, he does take my pawn. Um, oh. Wait. You missed mate. No, it's not mate. It looks like mate. It's not. Um, knight two five is still probably best here. I don't know. I don't know what's best. This looks like I have to do it, but I just... Uh, I've been flailing for the last 50 moves, and the fact that I made it this far is actually an achievement. Um, but eventually, I'm going to miss something. And it'll be something decisive. Thankfully, I don't have a third foul pawn, so I could do crazy stuff like dropping a pawn on 3-3. Three, three. Um, just trying to make the game really interesting. But not sure where that leads. Yeah, I put my knight down here because I sense that a bishop exchange might be happening soon. Okay. This is surprising too, because um, pawn 3-3 three, three looks more scary than this lance drop. Um, I forgot gold takes as a possibility. Um, hmm. Also, he doesn't even have to take it. Silver takes opens a tremendous can of worms, because if I could force the king away from this silver, uh, well, nothing happens, really. Uh, but it looks scary. But it's still nothing. Um, all right, and what do we do? Maybe I have an idea here. So maybe I take the silver, then take the lance. I'm not sure.
But yeah, the lance coming near our king is scary, so I want to have a foothold in my opponent's position before stuff uh, pieces start exchanging. Um, So this is check. And if king takes, I could consider taking the lance with check. Otherwise, maybe I just consider taking the lance without check, because this position is painful. Um, I mean, how do I get my king out of this corner? Do I have to move the gold over, maybe? <sighs> this corner's scary, because this knight, that's just sitting here. But, uh, after this I could do Silver Takes Knight, defending this pawn, which protects the head of my castle. Um, All right, so we control some squares near the opponent's king. Hopefully this will suffice, because I don't have a plan B. Um, but yeah, I think we've made our pieces as active as they can get. So um, we finally lifted the trap that was ensnaring our king. Our opponent he can't even put a knight to hit the silver right now. They could put a pawn to hit it. Um, but I'm attacking their bishops, so they're just going to take my bishop. I just don't know what they're doing next. Um... But yeah, I've been trying to prepare a path for my king to run. We've done everything we can to make this path as open and safe as possible. Um, but it's still dangerous. We have two knights that we could place near the opponent's king. Um, it would be nice to somehow attack this king before it manages to get away. Yeah, I just saw that, and I also saw that I could, like, drop a bishop back here, which would pin this pawn. Um, they could interpose a piece, but if I change the move order by dropping a knight first, or maybe if I just don't worry about it, um, hmm. Not worrying about it seems dangerous or reckless. Um, would you like a pawn? Here's a pawn. Of course the intent is that I'm going to drop another pawn right there. Um, I think he had intended I was going to drop something further back. Um,
And then if I did drop something further back, they could place a piece to hit my rook, and I'd have to consider running. Um, but this way, um, I get a tempo for a pawn. Well, even taking could be perilous for other reasons. Um, but yeah, I was mainly intending a pawn drop right here. Um, I mean, this looks like this has to be right. Now, they have defended their knight. Oh, I just... This is a lot to figure out. Um, so I'm a bit overwhelmed. I guess if they drop a bishop, we have to exchange rooks. And hopefully I have some kind of checkmate to follow. Yeah, eventually I'm going to drop a bishop too. It's going to attack toward their king. Oh, this bishop drop. Well, I guess it's the same idea. Um... The difference being that I could defend my rook if I'm crazy. It's not even that... Well, no, knight takes, so it is crazy. Um, but I think my attack is very strong. I just have to remember that pawn drop checkmate is not legal. Oh wait, now I've got silver drop mate. It's fine. Um Hmm. Two knights and a rook and a silver. Is the knight drop on one of these two? Looks like knight drop on either of the two works. Um. I can't read this. It's complicated, man. Oh, I was going to pawn drop here. That's not legal. Um, Silver drop, king takes, knight drop, king up, rook drop. Uh, okay. Uh, gold take, silver drop, king back, rook drop. Um, I think I accidentally have a win here. 
silver drop. King takes really the only thing to worry about. Um, then knight drop, king up, rook mate. King back, rook drop, king over, silver drop mate. No, I don't have two silvers. Ah, uh, shit. I think this still works somehow. I'm just not seeing how. But like, I'm considering king takes, knight drop, king back, rook drop. Um... King moves, rook takes gold, king takes gold drop, king over, bishop here, mate. I think that works. I drop king retreats like there's not a lot of variations uh if he just retreats because the bishop promotes which cuts off a ton of squares and this token already cuts off a ton of squares Good game. Holy crap. That was an adventure. All right. Wow. Oh. Yeah, we're going to take a look at some of these variations because this got complicated. Jeez. All right. Um... Yeah, so this is what I get for surviving move after move after move. And here my silver actually protects the head of my castle. So getting that silver on 1-3 eventually made the difference. Um, there must be some way that he can attack here. I just... I don't think he can overpress. I think he has to be a little more careful. But I just don't see... Um, a, a finishing move here. Um, like they say that four pieces is a mate, and he's not quite, or the attack never runs out. He's not quite at four just yet here. Um, oh. Before losing the edge, I had silver 1-3. Okay, that's good to note. Um, let's see. So here, yes, I'm forced to do this. Um... Oh. He could drop a pawn. No, it doesn't mate. 
Hmm. Yeah, I wish I saw like the move for him to make this work because it feels like I've deserved to lose the game. Like he came up with a very strong attack, but I just didn't see how to finish it. Okay, we have this exchange. Um. Yeah, the pawn drop is what I was thinking about just now. Uh, but what now, I wonder? Hmm. It's tempting, but I think again I've like taken control of this. Uh. Yeah, and this got sharp. Oh, he's yeah. When he sacrificed, like the bishop, that was our do or die moment. Um, and I, somehow, like I was scared for a while, and then I calmed down. Um, it was terrifying having that bishop bearing down on my position, but then I managed to take away every square on the long diagonal from the bishop. Um, and it feels like I should be losing material, but maybe not my king here. Oh, hello and welcome. Um... So, yeah, pushing the third file pawn is a bit of a double-edged sword. Granted, by this point, neither of us has the third file pawn remaining, but... Um, hmm. Or maybe it was when silver takes in the endgame. Maybe that was... Yeah, I don't know. There's a lot going on here. Yeah. It was definitely a nice edge attack. <laughs> um, yeah, I wonder. I don't know where I'd have to go on the move list. Um... That's an interesting resource for me to keep in mind, that if they do high Mino on the left side, they could still do this kind of edge attack. Um, uh, uh, I misspelled accommodating. There's one too many letters in that word. Uh, or rather, rather, uh, yeah, uh, likewise, uh, this tournament uh, is a fun place to try ideas in a competitive, fun setting. It's pretty great. Certainly, uh, uh, was interesting. <sighs> um, I've been practicing, uh, Suma lately. So, I have some idea how to survive these attacks. Yeah. 
Uh, Shogi Harbor's been doing her series recently, too, about just, like, what combinations of pawns and things, um, pieces, um, make it impossible for the king to escape. Uh, hmm. I'm not sure that this actually mates. Which is the scariest part about it. Um, after your bishop's sack, I'm really not sure what's going on. Um, but, yeah. Prior to the bishop's sack, uh, here or a uh, move ago, I was very scared. Yeah. Probably I'm busted, but... Um... Uh... But... It's just really complicated. I, I just don't know. Shogi is really hard, but, um, yeah, that's the way we play it to see if we can learn. Um, if we just knew all the game outcomes from the outset, where would the fun be in that? Um, so... Yeah, I guess there are several options here. <laughs> oh dear, it's also like yeah, this is the top candidate move, um, and I just I don't know what I would have done here. Um, I was thinking maybe this. This is again pretty spooky, but. Um, oh. Right, sorry. Uh, yeah. Um, I would have found that during the game, but still, like, it's not so easy. Um, maybe my king has to run. This looks so compromising for my king. But also, like, I'm not sure how I reclaim the first file ever. Um, I guess this is still called for. I mean, it by itself shouldn't decide this. But, um, we have to get that foothold in on the first file before things completely go to hell, so there's my attempt to reclaim something. Um, and yeah, I, it's complicated, man. Um... Uh, so it comes down to, can I take the pawn, or do I just run? Even if I can take the pawn, it's probably not worth it. Uh, but if I run, I'm losing my lance and everything. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know.
But yeah, I think I certainly respect my opponent's attack here. It looks powerful. Oh. Oh, uh oh. I missed an idea. Um, yeah, maybe pawn, Tokian takes pawn and then bishop takes knight. It's kind of scary, but they don't have a silver. Um, so maybe it's okay. Also, if they take, like, the first file opens. So that might be a bit hasty. Hmm. <laughs> That's pretty challenging. Um, I guess I'm also trying to think, like, my rook is cut out. It can't, like, promote where the opponent's knight is at. Um, so I'm trying to find what attacking ideas I can form here, but there's not a whole lot. Not unless my opponent attacks prematurely. Oh, okay. My early knight sack was good. Oh, good. That's good to hear that Usually when I play that sack, it's not the greatest idea, but in the, these circumstances it looked okay. Wait, can I just... No, if I take that, that gets ugly. If I don't take that, that also gets ugly. Um... <laughs> I don't have mate if I take that. My opponent has a scary attack, but it doesn't look like me. And my rook does need somewhere to go. Um... Yeah, I guess I just run. I get the sense that I don't understand what they're... Uh, they're seeing something that I'm not here. Like, yeah, I am giving up material. Um, but I'm getting something for it. I'm getting emotional compensation. If not actual compensation somewhere. Um... Yeah, I'm trying to reflect back on the rest of the game, because it was sharp. Yeah, that early night sack, I think, was the only thing I could have done there to try to assert an advantage. Um, So yeah, I apologize to my opponent. Usually I have two days on a weekend that I could be available. This weekend my schedule was kind of messed up. Um, so uh, we had to scramble to accommodate each other. Um, yeah, possibly he's right that this sequence is the right way about it, but it's just complicated. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess that's possible too. Oh, yeah, actually, the, during the game I was kind of afraid of this, not knowing what to do about it. Um, yeah, I still don't know what to do. It's hard to defend the outside of the castle. So, 
so this is um, even though it feels like it's a move slower, it does feel a, a bit wiser to play um, this way. I just, yeah, I'm kind of at a loss because my generals are hanging out in the corner not doing anything. So, very difficult for me to try to hold this position together now. Um, the only saving grace I have here is that I force the slants forward. So there might be some tactic somewhere or somewhen that somehow justifies my entire position, but it's not looking likely. Yeah. So, yeah, I think this knight move might be exactly what the, was required in the position. Like, yeah, I could promote the rook, but that doesn't really do anything. I could try to attack in the center, but again, I don't see anything positive coming from it. So, And I could try to defend the pawn, but when I start defending, uh, I'm committing material in ways that it can no longer be used for an attack. If I had just one more piece in hand, maybe this would be a fun position, but here not so much. Uh, if I block my king from the... yeah. Yeah, if my king can't run to the center, it's over. Um... So, um, yeah, so I have to play something to allow my king to escape, but it's perilous. Yeah, it's not a bad suggestion, although he's right, he sacks, and like, what can I do? Um, Yeah. <sighs> yeah, your knight move is actually quite good here. Um, so, I think that's what was called for in this position. And I would have to come up with some brilliant counter somewhere. Which seems very difficult because your castle is pretty solid. Uh, having such a solid castle means you can attack slowly and expect your attack to work. Uh, I know I like to attack early in the game, but here it's just not happening. Right, but here... I think you just put a knight down, and I don't really see myself surviving this. So, either way, a pretty fun game, but um, yeah, he had a very nice edge attack and just got a bit hasty about it. And I had to play a very patient, very resilient defense, reading a ton of stuff to the best of my ability, and honestly getting a bit lucky. Um. This is a nice, nice castle. It's very hard for me to break that. Um, 
So, I was trying, but you see how far I got. <laughs> um, so just need to play just a touch more patiently, I guess. Which I'm sure all the time he does, but in this particular instance, I just got lucky. So, it can happen. That mate at the end was special. Yeah, like, I don't think either of us could have seen all of that. I was kind of forced to see it, but yeah. Um, oh, that's right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so while I was trying to find a good score for my rook, he was building up this beautiful edge attack, which I completely underestimated and had no reasonable way to try to survive and then i survived it so just shows what a complex game shogi is um yeah so these over here definitely are just hanging out, waiting for the next game to start. Um, and so that allows him to play patiently and build up a very nice attack. Um, so yeah, we're gonna, I guess, go back a bit. I know he's not able to see what I'm looking at, but for the sake of our viewers and for those watching the VOD, uh, yeah, I was shuffling my rook back and forth, snatching a pawn. And while I was doing all of that, going nowhere in a hurry, putting my silver into the corner, which inevitably got me in a lot of trouble. Um, I had played the sack, which is kind of good, but like my generals are out of play. So... Um, that's the key, and this attack uh, was much faster than I anticipated. Um, so, maybe I'm still surviving here by some extremely lucky coincidence, but I don't know. All right. All right, yeah, yeah. I completely agree. This is a very exciting, interesting game. Um, not just because I want it. Uh, so, yeah. It was fun for spectators to spectate. Let's put this on the big board. Take one last run through the game. So, yeah, we had this bishop exchange that went unresolved forever. And even here, it's just really complicated. And where... yeah, this is where he surprised me. Um, I didn't think he would do that because I have this move, but... Um, yeah, around here, I need to come up with a good move. And I didn't find good moves and just got in trouble in a very quick hurry. So, somewhere around here, like, yeah, bishop 5-5 five five is scary, but... You know, maybe I just stick this back on the diagonal. Maybe it's fine. Maybe there's nothing to worry about. He's not going to let me drop a bishop profitably, so, like, why am I trying? Instead, this is a good, reasonable place to have a bishop. I have two pawns in hand. There is no file I can put them on, but this is not bad. Um, yeah, maybe gradually I can find some tricky idea. I don't know. Strong players know what's going on, or have some idea of what to aim for here. This knight sack, I liked it. But just because I liked it doesn't mean it's good. Um, I was proud of it. But, uh, yeah, stuff got complicated. 
Oh no, the reason I put the silver over here is to protect a lance. Which maybe I didn't have to do proactively. Maybe sacrificing the lance and just playing the silver over afterward. Or somehow trapping the horse after it takes the lance might be okay. But, um, yeah, I'm not so familiar with that. Anyway, yeah, nicely conducted attack. Very lucky checkmate at the end. And there's the mate. So yeah, good game.